Good morning. Uh, what I'd like to do this morning is just give you a little tutorial and a little tour of some of the features of, uh, of a relatively unknown and underutilized Google service called Google Alerts. Um, if you were to ask Google, uh, they would tell you that Google Alerts is a, quote, a change detection and notification service, unquote, which basically just means it scans the internet for new content and uh, notifies you when that content appears. It basically functions like a normal Google search. In fact, you can use the exact same syntax you would use in a normal Google search for your search query up here. Um, and then what it'll do is it'll automatically run that Google search. Uh, you decide the time as it happens once a day, once a week, and it will deliver the results to your email. Um, how is this useful, first of all? Well, um, there are a couple areas. Um, number one, if you're researching a particular topic or subject, uh, let's say you're going to deal with a, a current event and you want to follow that current event over the course of weeks or months, um, you could create a Google Alert so that every time a new article or blog or a piece of news appears related to that topic, um, it'll automatically be, del be delivered um, to your mailbox. So here's an example. Uh, very popular current event that's happening right now is the Arab Spring. So um, I'm going to create a Google search for Arab Spring. Uh, you'll notice that I'm putting in quotation marks to search for that exact phrase. Um, again, all of the normal advanced Google syntax works in this Google search, so obviously you're going to want to learn a little bit about advanced Google to get the best results out of Google Alerts also. Um, so I'm going to create Arab Spring, but I wanted to focus on Syria's involvement in the Arab Spring. You'll notice that every time I, I change the search query, it actually changes um, the preview over here, uh, just to give you an idea of how changing the search terms is going to affect your search. Um, you get to choose between everything, news, blogs, videos, discussions, books, I'm going to leave that set to everything, and I'm going to have a digest delivered to me once a day with only the best results, and you can also choose the email address. So I'm just going to create the alert. So this is my uh, Google Alerts page where uh, you can see the alert that I just created is here. And a couple other ones that I had previously created are also on the list. Um, I checked the help file and you can create up to a thousand Google Alerts per email address, uh, which is uh, way more than any normal human being uh, ought to need. Now, looking at the alerts that I had previously created uh, shows you another application for Google Alerts that I think is very, very useful in this day and age for identity management. Now, you'll notice down here I've created a Google Alert searching for Michael Peters, that's me, or Mike Peters, that is also me. What that does effectively is it creates a, a Google search which uh, informs me by email every time there is uh, new content on the internet with my name. Of course, the vast majority of the notifications um, I receive related to my name uh, have nothing to do with me, uh, have to do with the other Michael and Mike Peters in the world. Uh, so if I just go back over here, this is the Google Alert email, and if I click on this story, you'll see that the Mike Peters involved is a musician uh, who's appearing at some kind of uh, tribute concert. So the vast majority of the time when I get these notices, it has nothing to do with me. For you, of course, that's going to depend on how common your name is, pretty much, right? It's definitely comforting to know that uh, wherever and whenever my name appears on the internet, either because I've done something or uh, somebody who could be confused with me has done something, um, it's comforting to know that I will be made aware of it. Obviously, the first step in managing your identity or protecting your identity is being aware of the things that are going on that are associated with your identity. That's the important first step. So, this morning we've had a look at the basics of Google Alerts, which, by the way, you can find at www.google.com backslash alerts. Um, 
Bear in mind that again, Google Alerts is totally dependent on your search query, which works precisely the same way as a normal Google search. The main difference is that this alert will be run at a regular interval that you define, um, and it'll be looking only for new information or content that's been added since your last search. Beyond that, if you want to get the most out of Google Alerts, the best thing you can do is to learn some of the Google advanced search uh, syntax so that you can have the best query possible. So hopefully I've showed you a little bit about Google Alerts and given you some ideas on how a teacher could use it. Um, so that's about it for now. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.